What is going on college basketball fans? Welcome back to another video. Today we are back with our updated March Madness predictions. We're taking Jalen Artie's updated bracketology, putting it into our very own bracket and filling out from the first round all the way to the national championship. Before we get started, I just want to say please subscribe if you guys are new. This is an amazing place to get some March Madness coverage. We're going to have a ton of it coming out along with conference tournament predictions coming out. Um, a whole lot of content coming your way and we're super close to 5,000 subs. So let's get there and fair warning. If you guys are new to this series, new to this channel, I love upsets and upsets are going to happen. So I'm going to pick them. I got so many comments on this series talking about there's no way this team would beat that team. But nobody expected a team like St. Peter's to make the Elite Eight. Nobody expected FDU to beat Purdue last year. Insane, magical, crazy things happen in March Madness it is my favorite thing about this sport. And I love the sport so much. And I like to try to predict them. So that's the fun part in it. I like to predict upsets. I like to predict storylines because they happen in actual March Madness. So if you're looking for a chalked, March Madness bracket, this is not it. With that being said, let's get it started. So, we have our top overall seed. We do have the Purdue Boilermakers going up against either Arkansas Little Rock or Grambling State. I don't think Purdue loses to a 16 seed again. Um, I am going to go with Purdue to get it done. I think Braden Smith has been such an improved player this year. He is legitimately a top point guard in college basketball especially passing wise and the addition of Lance Jones on this year's team is so huge I like this Purdue team a lot to at least get past the first round but a little hint I think that they will probably go deep this year um, I have a good feeling about Purdue this year at least to go somewhat far I'm not saying they're for sure national champions or anything like that but I do think Purdue UConn and Houston are so clearly the top three teams in college basketball right now they, they just all look really really good and they're very very strong teams I'm gonna take Purdue in the first round here over I'd probably give it to Arkansas Little Rock over Grambling I think they are the better 16 seed then we got Texas Tech versus Boise State. Now, Boise State is an interesting team. They made the tournament the past two years, and I was very excited for them. I was hoping that they were able to get a March Madness win, but it just seems like they are unable to do it. And I really like this Texas Tech team. I also trust them a little bit more, and I just... I think the duo of Pop Isaacs and, and uh, Joe Toussaint is going to be too much. I think that they are players that are excited for March Madness, that are going to play hard in March Madness, and are going to kill it, man. I'm going to take the Red Raiders here to move on. Next up, we got Clemson versus Princeton. I really like this 5-12 matchup. I love the 12 over 5s. This is definitely a one that I would consider. And if somebody came to me and was like, yeah, I'm taking Princeton over Clemson, I would be like, cool. Yeah, that could definitely happen. No, no hate there. However, I do really like P.J. Hall. I like this Clemson team. I think in the non-conference at the beginning of the year, they showed me enough that they're a solid team. Joe Girard, uh, like I mentioned, P.J. Hall. They have a very solid team. Um, Hunter Tyson, I like him. And, and, and I'm going to take him here out of the first round to survive Princeton. And a close one. And a close one. Kentucky versus App State. App State's interesting. Um, I know James Madison is not in this bracketology. I'd like to see James Madison get maybe an at-large bid. But, you know, if they lose to App State again in the Sun Belt Tournament... That'd be three losses against them, so you can't really argue that. So App State, assuming they beat them three times, they also beat a team like Auburn earlier in the year. They are a very good mid-major and a very sneaky 13 seed. However, I just don't like the matchup for them. I don't like the matchup here. Kentucky is a force. Now, I do think Kentucky is beatable for sure. They could definitely get upset. Um on the right night I think more times than not Kentucky does win this game though I think Kentucky has been on fire lately um, ever since that Gonzaga loss 
they have been a force and they are legitimately one of the best offenses in college basketball so much talent on that team especially like freshman talent yeah i'm gonna take kentucky to get out of that one next up we do have wisconsin versus indiana state now i love this matchup for indiana state indiana state has a very very good starting five we all know they got robbie avila at center who can shoot as a center who can pass as a center who can score of course i mean he is a beast but they also have really really good guards on this team as well and, and i do think that this indiana state team does have potential to go deep during uh during march madness and they are that type of team that everybody can get behind and it's a perfect matchup for him i mean wisconsin looked dangerous they look like a very good team i i, I like aj store you know I, I i like their bigs um uh crow uh sam crow uh they they got really good players but and, and they're a good team but they've been struggling at the wrong time they've been struggling at the wrong time into february beginning of march that is not the time you want to go downhill and indiana state is too good for a team that has been struggling I'm going to take Indiana State in her first upset of the video, 11 over 6. You always got to have at least one of those. Next up, we got Marquette versus Vermont. Vermont. Um, yeah, Marquette, you know, they've been a very solid team. It just seems like they just can't uh, get over the hump of defeating UConn this year. But in their last matchup with them, they did not have... Tyler uh, Kolick. I do think that him and Cam Jones are one of the best backcourts in college basketball and i do like this marquette team a lot vermont sneaky but i'm not going to take the catamounts over marquette here in this one i'm going to take the golden eagles and that awesome awesome backcourt and they also got stevie mitchell so many good guards on this team next up we got nevada versus mississippi state in this one it's very 50-50. It's very, very 50-50 for me. Um, you got Jared Lucas. You got um, Blackshear on Nevada. But then you got a guy like Tolu Smith on Mississippi State who could just be a stud, man. And when it comes to March Madness, like, which one of – which one, which team star players are really going to turn up? I really like Blackshear and I really like Lucas and – it's making me kind of lean towards Nevada here to get the W. So I am going to take the Wolfpack. Next up, we do have Iowa State versus Sam Houston State. And I'm not going to lie. This Iowa State team is very strong. They're undefeated at home this year. They're playing very, very good basketball. But I'm not going to lie. I feel like this team could be beatable. And... Uh, I, I don't know, guys. I think this team could be beatable. I love Taman Lipsy. I think that he is such a good player. They just have a good roster all around. But I could definitely see a 15 over a 2 here. And I like to go bold. We've seen 15 over 2s plenty of times now. Especially the past two years we've seen a 15 over a 2. And I'm sorry, Iowa State fans. I know I'm going to hear it from y'all, but I am going to take Sam Houston State to defeat Iowa State in the first round and advance to the round of 32. <laughs> Let's go. Now, don't get me wrong. Iowa State has a ton of potential. I could see them possibly even making it to the final four. I think it was only two brackets ago that I made on this channel that I had Iowa State in my final four. I think Gilbert's good. I think Lipsy is really good. Um, even a guy like Rob Jones can turn up at some times. Like, I really like this team. I just think that they are also very beatable. And I like to have upsets. Let's do it, man. Sam Houston State to the next round. Next up, we got Purdue versus Texas Tech. And I do really like this Texas Tech team. But like I said, I really think Braden Smith has improved a ton since last year. Even Fletcher Lawyer has improved. And I feel like playing more of his role this year. Lance Jones is just a beast, man. 
I love the guards that they have this year to surround Zach Eady. And, and, and they also have a guy like Trey Kaufman Wren, who starts at, sometimes at the four. Uh, Mason Gillis, like they have a ton of really good players, and I feel like they're pretty deep as well. And I am going to take Purdue here to win this one over Texas Tech. Next up, we do have Clemson versus Kentucky. This is a very, very fun matchup, and Kentucky just has so much offense, but they don't have a ton of defense. They have so many good athletes and so, so much good talent on this team, though. I, I just feel like they're going to score enough in this game. I mean, uh, pff, Rob Dillingham, uh, Antonio Reeves, they have so many scorers on this team. Reed Shepard, like... I'm thinking of these guys, I'm just thinking, is Clemson going to be able to guard these guys? I just think Kentucky's going to be too much for them. They have too much talent. Give me Kentucky to the Sweet 16. Next up, we got Indiana State versus Marquette. It's interesting because I like this Marquette team. They have very good guards. That's kind of their thing. I think the key matchup is Avila versus Igudaru. And that's going to be a very, very fun matchup. Like, I would definitely love to see that if it were to happen. But I also think the Indiana State's guards could do pretty good as well. I mean, they they have two guards that are averaging over 15 points per game. Like, they could definitely keep up with Marquette. But Isaiah Swope is a little bit undersized could that hold him back as far as the defensive department against a guy like tyler kolik i think they'd probably put him on cam jones but it's definitely going to be interesting however i am going to take this upset and i am going to take indiana state to defeat marquette and move on to the sweet 16 i think this indiana state sycamore team is very solid and they could definitely make a run this year and I'm going to take them. Next up, we got Nevada versus Sam Houston State. And do we keep seeing like 15 seeds able to make the Sweet 16 for the third year in a row? It was St. Peter's. They made it to the Elite Eight. Princeton made it to the Sweet 16 last year. Are we going to see yet another one here in this one? I think it's definitely possible. I'm not going to roll with it too, I, though. I think like, you know, them defeating Iowa State is already like so magical. Sometimes that momentum just gets under teams, though, and they'll keep on winning. But I really like Jared Lucas and Blackshear. I like this Nevada team. I'm going to take them to go ahead and make it another round to the Sweet 16 and face off against Indiana State. Next up, we got Purdue versus Kentucky. This is a fun matchup. I mean, whew, Reed Shepard in this game is going to go crazy. Uh, but who's guarding Zach Eady? Because that's the thing. Kentucky does not have that great a defense. And if they had to ha have, if you had to pick a weakest point of this team, it would probably be, you know, the big men department, the front court. So. Are they going to be able to stop Zach Eady? I mean, they got guys like Trey Mitchell down there. I I just don't think it's going to be enough to stop him. And I also just think, yeah, guys like Lance Jones are going to be playing amazing defense and be able to slow down this Kentucky offense enough to where Purdue is going to win this game and move on to the Elite Eight. Next up, we got Indiana State versus Nevada and I think you guys know where I'm going with this one. I mean, Isaiah Swope, you got Kent, you got Robbie Avila. Who's stopping him on Nevada? Come on, Indiana State is moving on to the Elite Eight as an 11 seed. You love to see it. Can the Sycamores keep it rolling all the way to the Final Four as they match up against the number one overall seed in the tournament in Purdue? And Robbie Avila, he's got to go up against Zach Eady. Is he going to be able to stop him? I don't think so. I think it'll be a close game. I think Purdue-Kentucky will also be a very close game. But I just can't 
I just can't pick Indiana State to get it done. I think Purdue, too talented, too good, too big. I mean, I'm going to take Purdue to make it to the final four just a year after they lost to a 16 seed in the first round. Next up, we do have, uh, let's go ahead over to this region, UConn versus Stetson. Um, Stetson's actually been killing it in their conference tournament, so shout out to them, but I am going to have UConn win in the first round for sure. They're just too good, man, too good. Northwestern versus Oklahoma. A fun matchup, but I think you got to go with who's hotter right now. Right now, I think it's Northwestern. I think Oklahoma's been not playing as great as of late. And Northwestern, they also have more experience as they got a tournament win last year. I think that stuff like that does matter, especially when you got guys like uh, Boo Booey on the squad. You got Ryan Langmore, who was in the Sweet 16 last year. He was on Princeton, transferred over to Northwestern. You got some experience on that Northwestern team. Um, Ty Berry, you got some studs, man. I think it's going to be too much for Oklahoma, even though I do like guys like McCollum. I, I, I think... Uh, Porter Moser is a pretty good head coach. Um, he just kind of struggled there at Oklahoma um, as a coach. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Northwestern. Next up, we got BYU versus Richmond. This is yet another 12 over 5 that I could for sure see happening. Um, Richmond, very underrated. I mean, you think about the A-10 this year. A lot of people will go Dayton immediately because they're going to get in that large bid. Um, Loyola Chicago. Loyola Chicago is really, really good this year once again. Um, teams like VCU are very good, but you don't really hear them talk about the Richmond Spiders. And Richmond is a very, very good team this year. I just think that BYU is a great five seed, and I don't think that they're losing this one. I am going to take BYU to get it done. They're just so good at shooting the basketball and their offense. When their offense can get on, they seem unstoppable, man. And I like this BYU team to get out of the first round here and defeat Richmond. Next up, we do have Auburn versus Sanford. And this is a very fun matchup because Auburn, a very good defensive team. They can also score as well. They got some very solid players. Um, but Sanford is a team that likes to go, go, go super fast all the time, man. And they press. It's definitely going to be interesting. Like I think that this might be a good matchup for Sanford. And you guys have known, if you guys watch some of my other bracket predictions, I like the Sanford team a lot as a sleeper team to at least pull off a round one upset. And I'm going to pick them here again. I like the matchup here. I like Sanford. Let's take them over Auburn to move on. Next up, we got South Carolina versus either Villanova or New Mexico. Now, I am really high on New Mexico. I actually had them in my final four in my last video where I did my bracket predictions. However... They have not been playing the best as of late. I think they have the roster to make a deep run as a higher seed. I think that they are a very solid team. But I just they've been they just haven't been playing good enough for me lately. Uh, Villanova has been turning up, but I think I am actually gonna go with the sixth seed to survive the upset here, and I am going to take South Carolina to get it done. I think that, you know. They just have a very good team where they play as a team and they, they keep winning games, you know. As, as much as you want to say, oh, South Carolina could be a fraud, which I think they probably are. I don't see them going much past the, I don't see them going past the Sweet 16 at highest probably. But I think that they can win this matchup, especially with the way New Mexico is playing now. Uh, Villanova, I don't see them going far in the tournament if they're able to make it in. Um, yeah, I like the Gamecocks here to move on to the next round. Next up, we got Kansas versus High Point. I do think High Point is a sneaky team, but again, like New Mexico, they've just been losing as of late, and I just can't trust them right now. And against a team like Kansas, when Kevin McCuller is playing... They are going to be a force. That is their best player. A lot of people might think Hunter Dickinson is Kansas' best player. No, it is Kevin McCuller uh, for sure. And I am going to take Kansas here to win that game. Next up, we do have St. Mary's versus Seton Hall. 
a very fun matchup. Uh, but I like Kadari Richmond a lot. He's actually been one of my favorite players to watch in college basketball this year. And I'm sorry, I do like St. Mary's, but I am going to go with Seton Hall here to pull off the 10 over the 7 right here. Next up, we got North Carolina versus Quinnipiac. And I'm going to take North Carolina. I think R.J. Davis is just a stud. He he himself is going to get this team at least to the second round. Um, R.J. Davis has just been on a tear. I think I've been kind of high on this uh, is that I think Armando Baycott is uh, going to turn up in March Madness. I think he's really going to start to play a lot better. He's not been playing bad, uh, but I do think he's going to turn up. Harrison Ingram is just a beast hustle player, can make his threes. Stud player, stud player. Next up, we do have uh, UConn versus Northwestern in the second round. I do think this Northwestern team is sneaky. I, I, I hope that they can get up to like a seven or even possibly a six seed if they can make a run in the Big Ten tournament because I just don't like them facing a one seed in the second round. If they are a diff if they are a different seed, can get a little bit of a better seed, I maybe like Northwestern to make a run. UConn's too good. UConn's too good. I mean, so many great guards. Tristan Newton, Stephon Castle, um, Alex Caravan, not a guard, but very good. Donovan Klingon. So many good guards, man. So many good guards. Cam Spencer, an amazing shooter. Like, UConn is just really, really good, man. Next up, we got BYU versus Sanford. Can Sanford keep up the run? I am actually going to say that BYU does win this game. I, I like them a lot. I mean, this is going to be a very high-scoring game, a very high three-point shooting game for both of these teams. But I'm going to say BYU does survive this one. South Carolina versus Kansas, 6 versus 3. That's a fun matchup. I could see South Carolina doing it, man. I'm not going to lie. Kansas does not seem that great. They just don't have a lot of depth. But I do think a guy like Hunter Dickinson has a game in this one. I think Kevin McCuller has a game in this one. And I, th I think that they're just going to be too much for a team like South Carolina. So I am going to take Kansas here. Next up, we do have Seton Hall versus North Carolina. And Hall versus North Carolina. And Kadari Richmond, he's going to be guarded by Harrison Ingram, which is just... I just feel like that's just not a good matchup. They could even put like Cormac Ryan on him too. I just feel like North Carolina has the perfect matchup to be able to stop these Seton Hall players. And I just think RJ Davis is a mismatch for them. I think it's going to be too much. I'm going to take North Carolina here to get the job done. Next up, heading into our Sweet 16 matchups in this region, we do have UConn versus BYU. BYU, like I said, they can get hot, and if they do get hot, shoot a bunch of threes, I could see them potentially getting an upset here, 5 over a 1, but I am, however, going to go with UConn. Like I said, I just think they're so good this year, man. I, I don't see them losing before the Elite Eight. I just, I could see them losing in the Elite Eight, potentially to either Kansas or North Carolina, but in this bracket, I just don't see anybody in that top portion of the bracket who is going to be able to knock them out i mean byu might be the best chance and like i said if they're very on shooting wise and, and they can play good defense on uconn they might have a chance but even then it seems slim um i like uconn to the elite eight especially in this bracket but crazier things have happened kansas versus north carolina um blue blood battle blue blood all over this region i don't really like it but uh <sighs> These teams are good. I, nothing else you can say. Like They're very good teams. Kansas, North Carolina, Hunter Dickinson versus Armando Baycott. That would be an amazing, amazing matchup. Uh, Dewan Harris going up against, uh, going to be able to show off his defense against RJ Davis in this one. And it's going to be Kevin McCuller versus Harrison Ingram. Like This is like an amazing matchup. I really, really, really would love to see it. I am going to go with Kansas, slight upset, if not really an upset, three over a two, but I am going to take Kansas here to win that matchup. Now to head to 
the final four. We do have UConn. We do have Kansas. And wow, this is the fun one. Again, uh, Hunter Dickinson versus Donovan Klingon. Uh, you know, Hunter Dickinson definitely a little bit faster. He's going to be able to spread the floor. Um, you got Alex Caravan who is going to be going up against uh, Kevin McCuller. That's going to be a fun matchup. Uh, I don't know. Are they going to put Caravan on him? Or are they going to put uh, one of the guards on him? That's interesting, actually, to think about. But I think the key mismatch here is is the guards. I think Tristan Newton, Stephon Castle, you can only put Dewan Harris on one of these guys. Cam Spencer, who's going to chase Cam Spencer around the court? Because he plays that Jordan Hawkins role where he's going to run around the three-point line and just have unlimited stamina and just catch the ball and drain it. So you got to have somebody chase him around. I think they're going to be too much for Kansas in this one. I, I could see this one just being a classic Elite Eight game down to the wire. Uh, Game-winning shot, maybe not at the buzzer, but, you know, without in the final 15 seconds seconds or so of the game definitely could see that all right let's go down to our bottom regions um let's go over to this region we do have tennessee as our top overall seed and i believe the west region and they're going to be going up against norfolk state and i do think tennessee would win that matchup i mean they have a lot of experience they got dalton connett who has been on an absolute tear this year um yeah tennessee they got a good shot at it this year. Could this be their year? Next up, we got Texas versus Nebraska. This one could honestly go either way. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't want to pick against like Max A. Smith, Tyrese Hunter. Uh, Texas has a lot of really good players. I do think they're the more talented team, and I, I don't want to second guess myself. Nebraska's sneaky. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to second guess myself. I think Texas is the much better team here, honestly, especially the way they've been playing lately. Give me the Longhorns here to move on. San Diego State versus Grand Canyon. This is actually a rematch. Yes, that's right. This team, These two teams did play earlier in the year. It was a home game for Grand Canyon, and Grand Canyon was able to get it done. But... I do think that San Diego State is maybe the better team still, and I'm thinking I am going to go with them to get this win. I, I just think I do think Grand Canyon could do it again. Like I said, they did beat them earlier in the year. That could definitely instill a lot of confidence in them heading into this matchup, 100%. Um, but I, I just like Jaden Ladee. A lot I think that he is going to be an awesome player uh, this March Madness he has been so much improved from last year give me the Aztecs to move on next up we do have Illinois versus UC Irvine and again I don't really like this 13 over 4 here I think Illinois is too good Coleman Hawkins um, you got uh, 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 Terrence Shannon jr. of course Illinois is a great team they got a lot of good shooters uh was it in domask they got a lot of really good shooters on that team i am going to take illinois to get past uc irvine next up we do have utah state versus either st john's or virginia i think st john's could be sneaky i mean virginia could always just come out of nowhere and win a couple 50 to 48 games uh and make it to the sweet 16 they've just been struggling as of late I think I am going to take St. John's here to go for, to go at last four in to round of 32 here. Defeat Virginia and then defeat Utah State. Um, I, I think Utah State, yes, they do deserve to be a six seed. But if they get the right team going up against them, I just I don't feel a lot of confidence in Utah State for some reason, man. For some reason. Next up, we got Baylor versus Colgate. And Colgate, you know... They've been on the verge of pulling off an upset for the last couple of years now. Like They're always getting into March Madness out of the Patriot League. Can they finally pull off an upset? I just don't think so. I think Baylor, very solid team. A ton of really good guards. Uh, Ray J. Dennis. They got um, Jacoby uh, Walters. A lot of super good players. Uh, Jalen Bridges, who's the senior. 
Um, they got they got a lot of great players. Uh, I am gonna take Baylor here to move on. Next up, we do have Gonzaga versus Colorado State. I love me some Isaiah Stevens. Him versus Ryan Nimhart is going to be a pretty fun matchup to watch. Um, but Graham E.K. has just been on a tear lately. <laughs> I'm going to take Gonzaga. I'm going to take Gonzaga. Graham E.K. has just been on an absolute tear, bro. And I got to take Gonzaga. I got to take Gonzaga here in that matchup. Arizona versus Eastern Washington. I do think Arizona is pretty solid. I like Kylan Boswell, Caleb Love. Uh, very good backcourt. They got Omar Ballo. They got a lot of super good players on this team. Just seems like Arizona always seems to choke. They choked last year as a two seed. Lost to Princeton in the first round. And it just seems like they can never get over that hump. The year before that, they lost to, I think, what, TCU? No, they beat TCU and then they lost in the Sweet 16. I mean, yeah, I am going to take Arizona over Eastern Washington. I already picked one fifteen over two. I don't think it will happen again. Uh, I don't think two of them will happen in the same year. Uh, that would be pretty insane. But I, I don't feel great about Arizona, but I do feel great about them in that first round matchup. Next up, we do have Tennessee versus Texas. Um, Texas could be a dangerous matchup for them. I do think Dalton Connett does do enough, though. Um, very interesting, you know, Rick Bar, uh, yeah, Rick Barnes playing up against his uh, former team that he used to coach in Texas. So that is a fun little storyline we do have going on here. But I am gonna take Barnes to be able to beat his former uh, team. Uh, Dalton Connett has a huge game in that one and gets him to the Sweet 16. Next up, we got San Diego State versus Illinois. This is a fun matchup. I mean, Jaden Ladee versus Coleman Hawkins is going to be a very, very fun matchup. I do feel like I want to go with Illinois in this matchup. I think maybe I trust their guards a little bit more, even though, you know, San Diego State does have some good ones like Waters, uh, Trammell. They do have some good guards, but I just think Illinois shooting... Could be the difference, but also San Diego State's defense could be the difference here in this game. So I'm a little bit back and forth on this one. This one could go either way. It's very coin flippy to me. I think I am going to go with San Diego State. I am going to go with San Diego State here to move on. Next up, we got St. John's going up against Baylor. St. John's, you know, they could be a little sneaky 11 seed coming in here. Uh, but I like this Baylor team right now. I like this Baylor team. I'm going to take Baylor to keep on moving. Um, like I said, Jalen Bridges, an amazing hustle player. He's starting to score more lately as, as well. Uh, some great guards on this team. I think Ray J. Dennis is super good. We all know Jacoby Walters, one of the better freshmen this year in college basketball, tearing it up. Give me Baylor there in that one. Next up, we do have Gonzaga versus Arizona. And this is interesting. I mean, another pretty good storyline. Tommy Lloyd going up against his uh, former coach in Mark Few. Uh, he was the assistant coach there at Gonzaga before he got the job at Arizona. So that is a fun matchup there. And who's going to win that battle? I do think that Graham E.K. could cause some problems for Arizona. I think Ryan Nemhard going up against Kylan Boswell. Caleb Love versus Nolan Hickman. You got a ton of really good matchups. I just feel like Arizona has a lot of the matchups. Like I feel like they would win a lot of those matchups. But the coaching match, I feel like Mark Few, like he does not want to lose to one of his former assistants. Come on now, he doesn't want to. So I could definitely see a Gonzaga upset here. And I'm kind of leaning towards it. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of leaning towards it. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with Gonzaga here to move it up. Huge game for Graham EK. Dominates Omar Ballo down low. And they just need a great game from Ryan Nimhard because sometimes Ryan Nimhard can out of nowhere have like a 20 point game almost 10 assists and just 
kill it, man. They need one of those. I think they get one. Tennessee versus San Diego State. Um, this is definitely a place where Tennessee could be in trouble, possibly. I could definitely see that happening. Um, and, yeah, I think San Diego State's defense can be actually a defense that could slow down Dalton Connett, could definitely slow down guys like Sakai Ziegler, uh, Vescovi. I mean, Tennessee has a very solid team, but I feel like San Diego State matches up pretty well with them. And I I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with San Diego State here. I think that they just have a great team. I like Jaden Ledee a lot. I think he's underrated. And him and Dalton Kinnett are going to be fun to watch go at each other, man. And I like the Aztecs to knock off the number one seed in their region for the second year in a row. I mean, the same story. Come from a five seed, knock off the one seed like they did to Alabama last year in the Sweet 16. Make it to the Elite Eight. There lives Aztecs once again, knocking on the door for back-to-back -back Final Fours. <coughs> Next up, we got Baylor versus Gonzaga. This one's interesting because I do think that Graham E.K. could cause some problems for Baylor here. And if they can just, if they already got past Arizona, I think that they could definitely get past Baylor, which is interesting. I kind of want to go Baylor here. I just feel I'm feeling this team. I, I'm feeling the energy. I think Scott Drew wants to get back to a Final Four once again, man. I could definitely see it, man. I could definitely see it. But I think I am gonna go with Baylor here to move on. I think Baylor. I, I yeah, I feel it with Scott Drew, man. He wants to get back far into the tournament. He hasn't really done so since they won the national championship back in 2021. So I am going to go with Baylor here to to win this game. I think Graham E.K. could cause some problems for him, but I think Baylor plays really good defense enough to kind of stop this Gonzaga team for the most part on offense. And, yeah, defensively, I like Baylor in this matchup. Let's have them move on. So now we got a very good defensive battle between San Diego State and Baylor. They've been two very consistently great defensive teams over the past so many seasons. So to see them go off, to, to go at each other here in the Elite Day is just going to be awesome to see. Jaden Ledee going up against Jalen Bridges. I think that that is the key matchup. It's going to be an awesome matchup. I think Jaden Ledee probably wins that matchup. And then you got the guards, Ray J. Dennis, and going up against probably Trammell. Uh, you got uh, Reese Waters going to go up against uh, Jacoby Walters. Then you got Lamont Butler on San Diego State. I like San Diego State in this matchup. I'm going to pick them to make back-to-back -back Final Fours as a five seed once again. Similar path, man. And... Yeah, they move on to the final four. So, so far we got a five seed and we got our two one seeds making it to the final four. And we still got one more region to get to before our final four pick. So let's go ahead and get to it. We do have Houston versus South Dakota State. I am going to take Houston. I really like this Houston team. Another great defensive team and they have been playing so amazing this year. Uh, Kelvin Sampson hats off to a man Michigan State versus FAU it definitely seems like they he's like uh, Joe Lenardi is definitely setting up uh two teams that have potential to make a deep run this year and have solid rosters and, and had a lot of preseason hype in Michigan State and FAU somewhat disappointing for both of these teams I'd say more so to Michigan State than FAU but both teams have been pretty disappointing this year for the most part um, but I don't feel great about Michigan State at all right now. I don't like the way that they are playing. It's hard to pick against Tom Izzo in March, but I just I just can't pick them right now. The way that they're playing, I am going to take FAU here to win that game. I think they have much more potential in March Madness this year than Michigan State does at the moment. Next up, we do have Washington State at McNeese State, and I was a little bit high on Washington State. I'm kind of starting to get back down on them a little bit. Um, they just lost to their rival Washington at home last night. Uh, I was watching that game. 
just didn't look that great. And McNeese State is like, I, I'm yet to pick a 12 over a 5 in this video. So you guys might have seen this one coming, especially because it's McNeese State. And McNeese State is like maybe the strongest 12 seed this year. I mean, they are a great team. They have Shahada Wells on their team, who was on TCU last year, was a beast as a backup and he's a beast this year and, and they just have so many great players mcneese state is nice and i'm going to take them to upset washington state here in this one i feel like a very very realistic upset there <laughs> alabama versus charleston i could see the college of charleston maybe being able to pull this one off but i am going to go with alabama i just think it's going to be tough because Mark Sears is a beast, man. Grant Nelson's pretty good. Uh, Estrada, Aaron Estrada, he's a really good player. But Mark Sears is the main reason why I don't want to pick Alabama to lose in the first round. I could see them losing early, maybe next round to McNeese State. But I don't see them losing first round here to Charleston. I think Mark Sears is going to do enough to get them past them. Next up, we do have Florida versus South Florida. Battle of Florida here. And I like South Florida. 11 seed over the uh, 6 seed. I mean, I do like Florida, the, that Florida team. I think that they are a sneaky, sneaky 6 seed. But South Florida is very underrated. I mean, the fact that FAU is a higher seed than them right now, like they should feel disrespected because South Florida has ran the American this year. And I feel like they deserve that nine seed over FAU right now. So I am going to take the Bulls, South Florida Bulls here to get it done. Next up, we do have Creighton versus Oakland. And Oakland is a sneaky 14 seed. If they were going up against a different opponent, I'd maybe think about picking them. But I just think this Creighton team is so good. I think that I think I'm getting higher on them than Marquette this year. Um, originally, I was very high on Marquette. Um, as being the second best team in the Big East other than UConn. But I think I'm back on kind of Creighton being the second best team in that league. Like, Creighton has been killing it, man. Um, but yeah, if Oakland was going up against maybe like a Baylor, possibly. Um, what? Who are our other three seeds? So you got Kansas and Marquette. I feel like if maybe they were going up against Marquette, I would think about taking Oakland, but it's crazy to take a 14 over a three. I like Creighton a lot. I'm going to go with Creighton. We got Dayton versus TCU, and I'm going to take Dayton. I mean, Darren Holmes has been playing great. Um, really, the Staten team as a whole has been having just an amazing season, and TCU, you know, they're kind of at a down point right now. I mean, I like Emmanuel Miller. I like Jameer Nelson Jr., but they're kind of starting to play not that great at the wrong time, and I don't like to pick teams like that. I'm going to take Dayton. Next up, we got Duke versus Toledo out of the MAC Conference, and I don't like Toledo that much. I think Akron is the best team in the MAC this year, um, and, I, and I like Duke a lot. I like Duke a lot. I'm going to take Duke here to win this one pretty easily, pretty easily. Next up, we got Houston versus FAU. Interesting, interesting matchup because I do think the FAU has the players and have talent to be able to knock off Houston. I've had all my other one seeds at least make it to the Sweet 16. I need to have an upset. I think the FAU has enough with uh, John L. Mitchell. Uh, you got, uh, big Vlad Golden, you got, uh, so many good players on this FAU team, and I do think that Jamal Shedd is that type of player, like, that he could lead his team, especially if he turns up in March Madness, he could lead his team very, very far, and I do think it's possible, but in this bracket, Houston, unfortunately, is going to be my one seed that is going to lose early, I always usually have one one seed that goes down pretty early um, because it tends to happen every year and this year I just feel like FAU is a good matchup for them I could see it happening I think it's realistic to happen now I do think Houston probably beats FAU more times than not but I think FAU beating Houston is possible I mean FAU beat teams like Arizona this year uh, they were in the final four last year they brought back that same team FAU moves on. Next up, we got McNeese State versus Alabama. 
And we are going to have yet another upset because I am taking McNeese State to defeat Alabama in the second round and move on to the Sweet 16. I mean, McNeese is so good, man. And they're going to have 30 wins this year heading into March Madness. I think Alabama is definitely beatable, like I mentioned earlier. I think Mark Sears is a beast. But if you could slow him down, I think Alabama is definitely very beatable. And I think McNeese State can definitely do that. With Shahada Wells, I think that Shahada Wells could play some very good defense on Mark Sears especially. Give me McNeese. Give me McNeese. Next up, we got South Florida versus Creighton for a chance at the Sweet 16. And as much as I do like the South Florida Bulls team and could see them go far and would like to see them go far, I just think this Creighton team is too good right here to go home. And I am going to take the Creighton Blue Jays to move on. I mean, Stephen Ashworth, Trey Alexander, Ryan Cockburner, Baylor Shireman. So many good players, man, that could just take over games. You never know who is who's going to be on this Creighton team. Give me Creighton. Next up, we got Dayton versus Duke. And I do really like this Dayton team. But I think Kyle Filipowski could play some good defense on Darren Holmes. And if they can shut down Darren Holmes, I feel like the guards for Duke completely outmatch Dayton. Like, it's not really that close to me. I mean, you got Jeremy Roach, uh, Tyrese Prodker, and Jared McCain has been absolutely killing it lately. Give me Duke to move on. Now, we have our Sweet 16 matchups in this region. We do have FAU versus McNeese State. And let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. 12 seeded McNeese State. A good matchup for them going up against the 9 seed. And they are going to move on to the Elite Eight, the McNeese State Cowboys. Let's go. They are the main Cinderella of the bracket today. Um, I, I know a lot of people like McNeese State this year to make a run. And me, myself included, if they can get matchups like these, Washington State, Alabama, then FAU, I could definitely see them winning all three of those games. Like, it is definitely possible. I'm going to have McNeese State as my Cinderella. They're making it to the Elite Eight as a 12 seed. Next up, we do have Creighton versus Duke. And this is a high, high-level basketball matchup right here. These two teams both have potential to make the Final Four. Uh, I think I had Creighton in my Final Four in my last one, uh, bracket predictions last week. Definitely, definitely could do it. I think I'm going to take Duke this time, though. I think I am going to take Duke. I do think Baylor Shireman could cause some troubles for Duke. I think that Ryan Cockburner guarding the paint could cause some troubles for Duke. But I think Kyle Filipowski will do enough down low. I think, you know, Mark Mitchell can help down low as well. Um, down low in the paint. Uh, I just think Jared McCain, between him, Tyrese Proctor, uh, Jeremy Roach, I think that they can do enough. But then it's going to be Ashworth, Trey Alexander, Baylor, Shireman. Who's, which three is going to be better? I'm going to go with Duke. But if Baylor Shireman is playing lights out, I think that that's the key. I think Creighton would win. I think Creighton would win. But that one's very 50-50. I think Creighton would win if Baylor Shireman is playing, like, his best game. Like, his to the best of his abilities is what I'm trying to say. But I could see guys like Tyrese Proctor and Kyle Filipowski, who I think are like the backbone of this Duke team, just killing it. Then we got McNeese State versus Duke. And sadly, this is where I am going to have the McNeese Cinderella story come to an end. And I am going to have Duke make it to the Final Four. I mean, yet another reason for everybody to just despise Duke for ending our favorite Cinderella of the year. I mean, maybe not our favorite. Indiana State made it to the Elite Eight too this year in my uh, fantasy bracket here. But uh, we do have our final four. We do have one-seeded Purdue going up against five-seeded San Diego State. One-seeded UConn going up against two-seeded Duke. And, yeah, some fun matchups, guys. Let's get into our first one. We have Purdue versus San Diego State. Who is going to stop Edie? Is it going to be Jaden Ledee? It definitely could be. Um, yeah, I definitely think that Zach Edie does play. Um, 
a huge role in this game. Of course he is, right? But it is going to cause some mismatch problems for the Aztecs. I do think that they are just such a good defensive team that they will scheme up some way to try to slow down Edie. But again, I'm not necessarily convinced that San Diego State's guards are better than Purdue's. Like, I do think Braden Smith just had such a big jump this year. Lance Jones is a beast. Those two guys specifically are going to make me take Purdue to the national championship game. Next up, we do have UConn versus Duke in a very fun matchup. Uh, you got Cal Filipowski and Mark Mitchell. Are they going to be able to stop or slow down Donovan Klingon down low? I think that they definitely can. I think it's going to be mostly Mark Mitchell. I think that he could play some great defense on him. He's a great athlete. Then you got Cal Filipowski on Alex Caravan, which is an awesome, awesome matchup. I think Cal Filipowski probably wins that. Then you got Jeremy Roach going against Tristan Newton. I definitely give the advantage to Tristan Newton, but Jeremy Roach is going to play that his butt off there. Then you're going to have to have a guy chase around Cam Spencer. I think it's probably going to be Jared McCain. And I think Jared McCain could, you know, shoot the lights out right back at Cam Spencer. Like, I'd probably give the edge to Cam Spencer in that matchup. But then it's going to be Tyrese Proctor, who could also be the difference in this game. This one's going to come down to the wire, man. Duke UConn would be a legendary, legendary battle. I would love to see it, man. I would love to see that. I guess it would be Stefan Castle versus Tyrese Proctor. Those are some good matchups. I pick UConn a lot. I didn't last time, but then like all year I've been picking UConn. I think this one is very close. I'm going to switch it up a little bit and go with Duke here. I'm going to go switch it up a little bit, go with Duke. I like Duke a lot this year. I think Jared McCain coming into his own has been huge for this team. And yeah, Kyle Filipowski, Tyrese Proctor, Jared McCain. Jeremy Roach, Mark Mitchell, get him back here to the national championship game. It's been a le at least a little while since we've seen Duke in the national championship game. They made the Final Four a couple years ago, back when uh, what Kansas won the national championship. But they are back in the national championship game, going up against Purdue. It is going to be a fun matchup. Duke versus Purdue, one seed versus two seed. We do have, uh, you know, Kyle Filipowski again. Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell are going to have to try to slow down Zach Eady. Uh, they're going to need, uh, I think Purdue's going to need Trey Kaufman Wren to step up on the floor, get some more size in there to cause some mismatch problems. He's going to maybe have to knock down a three or two to really stretch the floor there. It's going to be Braden Smith versus Jeremy Roach. I think a very a pretty even matchup at the guard position. I'd maybe give the edge to Braden Smith, actually, but a very close one. Then you do have uh, Tyrese Proctor going up against Lance Jones. You got Jared McCain going up against Fletcher Lawyer. I feel like this is a pretty even battle, but then you go to the depth along with, I think, Zach Eady could kind of overpower Mark Mitchell for the most part. It's it's going to be fun. They're going to try their hardest to slow him down. But I also like Purdue's depth here in this one. And I am going to have Purdue as my 2024 national champions, champions as of today, knocking off Duke. So that is going to do it for updated March Madness bracket predictions. I know it's like kind of crazy to pick Purdue because it's like, can you really trust them? But I am trusting them here, you know, to kind of pull a 2019 Virginia, lose to a 16 seed, come back the following year, and win the national championship. I think that they could do it. I think that they are a much improved team from last year. I think that they are not going to forget what happened to them last year. They are going to be on a mission. And given the matchups that they got, I kind of like Purdue here in this bracket. So let me know what you guys think. Just the way that it played out. Um... I just think that the 
the only team that Purdue like would maybe have like a ton of struggles with, like as far as like matchup wise, would maybe be UConn. But even then, I'm not like exactly sure that Purdue wouldn't win that game. So like, I think that Purdue, like based on past seasons, it's hard to trust them. But you can't argue with the fact that they definitely have a team that could win the national championship this year. And I haven't picked them yet this year, but as of today, right now, if this were the bracket, I think I would pick Purdue to win it all, um, given the way the bracket shaped out. So let me know what you guys think about my picks. Let me know who you guys would have in the Final Four based on this bracket. And yeah, guys, subscribe for more college basketball content. We're su super close to 5,000, so get us there. And thank you so much for watching.